missing though so far on the programme on Friday. We've not heard that lovely sound. The cork popping from the bottle. Hopefully wine expert Tom Canavan's going to do something about that. It's been a long day, Tom. What have you got for us tonight? Oh, well, I've got something to cheer you up and send you home <laughs> happy, I think. <laughs> We're off to Argentina tonight. Oh. Um, one of my favourite countries, beautiful country. Uh, vineyards up against the Andes Mountains. You know, really couldn't be any nicer. And it's a big wine producing country. We've got three examples, three different grapes, but all of them very kind of classically Argentinian grapes to try tonight. I'm okay. not going to lie, Tom. Let's get stuck in. What's stuck the first one? It. First one's a white wine. It's a wine made from a grape called Torontes. Uh, we've actually had a Torontes before on the show. It's a very aromatic, very distinctive grape, but it's Argentina's own speciality grape. So this is the Lorca Torontes 2008. It's in Majestic at 749. Although we buy two bottles, you get them for six nine nine each. And have a taste of it. Let's go have for a it. smell of it first of all, and get that perfume from it. It's very unusual, isn't it? Very unusual. I think of jasmine flowers. Um, I think Ooh. of things like green herbs and lemons. It's a very unusual smell, but it's very aromatic. Oh, Tom, it's Friday, and we love the wine. I like it? that. Is this? Would we find mm -hmm. this anywhere mm -hmm. else, or is this simply Argentina? This green. It really. There's a little bit of it in Chile. They call it Torrentel in Chile. But you won't really see that. That's for the domestic market. Mm -hmm. If you're talking to Rontes, you're talking Argentina. And it's crisp in the palate, mm -hmm. but it's not thin. You know, it's got quite a bit of body it to it. smells quite sweet. It smells sweet, but drinks dry. Mm -hmm. um, terrific with sushi. There's a dish called ceviche, which is, again, raw fish with lots of lime and coriander and chilli. An Argentinian dish, and it's fantastic mm -hmm. with that. So a really, really nice wine with, with your white. Yeah. White meat and fish. Lovely. Lovely. Now, we're going to where we would expect to go, Malbec. This is big Argentinian reds, isn't it? It is. Malbec is Argentina's ace in the pack. It's its big red wine grape, makes fantastic wines. It's actually a French grape, comes from the Bordeaux region, but Argentina seems to have stolen a bit of thunder, making some okay. of the best. So this is actually a blend of Malbec and a little bit of Syrah. It's the Vinalba Malbec Syrah, 2006, so it's got a couple of years in the bottle. Comes from Asda at 748. Mm -hmm. And again, that lovely kind of plum and cherry kind of fruit, very dark. A wee, a wee bit of something, a bit like a kind of coffee touch there too. A little bit of peppery. Definitely maybe. a bit of pepper, yeah. yeah. And I think, funnily enough, I think it's one of those wines that goes well with, well, Malbec Ooh. and steak oh, are a match yeah. made in heaven. But try it with a peppercorn sauce, oh. picks up a wee bit of pepper from that. <coughs> Delicious. A bit heavy for me, I think. Uh, well, it's quite a full-bodied oh, wine for sure. It's a full-bodied wine, and these Malbecs are the renownedest big wines. Maybe you'll like the next one a wee bit more, but <coughs> I think it's a good, I really like, good you wine. Like it, don't it's you? a big, robust red wine it, for a steak. It's it needs good, food. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like a lot of red wines really need food, and this is one that needs something off the char grill or a really good steak. Okay, well, oh, let's see if we can make see. Michelle happy with <laughs> our final <laughs> oh, wine tonight. Oh, Listen, Michelle's <laughs> always happy, but anyway. <laughs> okay, last one's really unusual. The grape is called Tanat comes from the southwest of France again, but here it's in Argentina. And this one comes from a vineyard at almost 9,000 feet in altitude. Ooh. The Ben Nevis is only about 4,400, so it's more than twice the elevation of Ben Nevis. So when you're up there, I've been to these vineyards, and literally you can feel your breath's a bit short, mm. and it's away up in the clouds, but it makes lovely, cool climate kind of conditions. What does that do to the wine? How does that change things? Well, basically, without getting too technical about it, for every 1,000 feet that you go up, you drop about a, a degree of temperature. So from the valley floor up to the top there, you've dropped about nine degrees of temperature. So it makes it cool. It means the grapes don't ripen so fast. Mm -hmm. They can hang in the vine for longer, and that develops more flavours and more aromatics. All right, let's so if we try this one, it's the Colomy Tanat 2008. It's in Marks and Spencers. It's quite expensive at 9.99, but it's something a little bit special, I think. Oh boy, I Very like that. fruity, isn't it? Really fruity. Very fruity nose. Um, lovely plum blackberry, kind of chocolate notes. Ms. McManus. Oh, my eyes twitching. It's a wee bit strong for me. Well, I'm actually not sure what the alcohol is in this, but it's got a lot of power and a lot of well, depth. It's got, yeah, it's a <coughs> powerful wine. But match it with something from the barbecue. Match it with anything spicy, chorizo sausage or something like that. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. And it's got lots of, if you like a big, robust red wine, it's a beauty. I've got Tom. to say, I think that's absolutely lovely. Yes. Tom, you've brought us some great treats. Where are we going to be going in the world with you next week? Next week, we're going to South Africa. Because I'm actually off to South Africa the day after oh, the show. Band, band. Oh. Oh, you can come with me, Michelle. Tom, and this is you know, I got delivered uh, 12, a dozen red roses today, and I thought they were from you anyway. Well, I wouldn't just give you a dozen. I know who oh, they're thanks. from. Who? Sean Batty. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much. Happy Valentine's Day when and it comes. To you.